So today we're going to have a look at the BeatStep Pro, this thing right here. It's something that I've been using since 2017. And I've got to be honest, I have tried a load of other sequences in that time between now and then and before and stuff. I've got to be honest, this is probably the closest I've got to the sequencer. It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. And it's, it's far from perfect, actually. But it is the closest I've ever got. Usually next to the BeatStep Pro, I have a Circlon connected up to it. We might have a little chat about that and how these talk in a little bit and the reasons why I've gone for this. But first, we're going to have a look at the BeatStep Pro on its own because there's always questions. The reason I've done this video is mainly because people always ask if I do a live video or something like, uh, I don't know, the last one, Mind Over Matter, for instance. There was lots of questions about the BeatStep Pro, how it was being used, what the fudge is happening. So may as well have a chat about it. So to start with, the BeatStep Pro is a sequencer, if you don't know. It sequences things like the synthesizer, which is right there. So in the music videos, you see me playing on this. This is controlling the synthesizers. So this doesn't make noise itself. In fact, it probably does. If you plug something in, it'll go. I haven't got any mini jacks, so uh, can't try. But on the back of it, there's loads of outputs. If, you've, if you're aware of the BeatStep Pro, you know that there are a load of outputs on the back. There's got uh, CV and pitch for two CV sequences and then eight dr drum trigger outs, two clock ins. I've completely forgot what's around the back. Uh, MIDI in and out, uh, clock in and out, on off, a really flimsy USB power oh, a socket, which I have not broken yet. I've had this specific one since 2017. It's been to nearly pretty much every gig that I've played and stuff. It's been kicked around, booted around. All of the sockets are still amazingly working, even the flimsy micro USB piece of poop. It's just, yeah, it still works. There's no, uh, one of these pots are a little bit wobbly. No, they're not. They're actually pretty solid. They just haven't got knobs on top. So first, let's have a look at how it's wired up. It has been actually wired up in this kind of arrangement for the last three years. It hasn't actually changed. What it is, is basically acting like a MIDI controller. I don't use any of the uh, CV outputs most of the time. These ones right here on the back. Uh, you may see in videos, uh, I use those out when I'm doing like funny builds and stuff like um like the, uh, the bass or something or testing things. I plug things into the outputs of the BeatStep Pros and you can wire things straight in. But for this, for the modular synthesizer right here uh, on the bottom, there is a MIDI to gate. I've spoken about this in other videos as well. It's a 16 channel MIDI to trigger device. So every single one of these pads is wired straight into one of these. If you look like, you'll see that they light up. So those are directly synced. I can control 16, well, whatever needs triggers coming out. And I've done this because of uh, speed of setting up. Usually if I go to a show or something, I haven't in a while actually, but um, there's only one wire to connect this box, which is right here, to the BeatStep Pro, and then there's only two wires to connect this box, this box to the box above it. So it's actually really quite quick to set this all up. All these wires are still in. It's just got a front case that covers them. Pop this one on, pop that one on, get this out, and you set up in about 10 minutes. There's no faffing around. After that, after that, there's a MIDI through that is wired coming out of the MIDI to gate uh, module down there. And that single MIDI wire goes up to this uh, module right at the end, which is a MIDI to CV. It's a six channel MIDI to CV based on the MIDI Muso chip. And you can actually get this in Cosmo format. The uh, the panel and the PCB project is available over on my website. So check that out amongst all of, a lot of the other modules you see here. So with MIDI, you can send out anything on any of the MIDI channels. So MIDI channel uh, one to MIDI channel 16. The way it's wired up is drums are on MIDI channel four. Uh, so the module over there is set up to listen to any signals that come through MIDI channel four. Each of these pads are assigned the same note as the uh, notes that are assigned on the module over there. There's two note sequences on the BeatStep Pro. So you can sequence two different synth lines at the same time on top of the drums. So there's sequencer one. Uh, that's just assigned to MIDI channel one and the MIDI to CV module up at the top. The first channel on that MIDI to CV module listens to MIDI channel one. So whenever you're on sequencer one, it listens to the first channel, which I have wired in to a bass synthesizer voice. MIDI channel two, uh, I don't know what this is wired into at the minute. It's wired into 
uh, just a lead note kind of thing. Oh, that sounds awful. Oh, it sounds even worse. Oh my god, I'm just making it. Oh god. Oh, oh, chill your beans. What's going on here? Oh dear. Oh, come on. Oh, well, that's pretty boring, that note. So, yeah, that's what you can sequence with this. There's this control mode where you can uh, kind of assign uh, other MIDI things onto the pads and onto the knobs. I don't use that. It's, uh, it's lost on me. There's a fair few functions that I don't use, and we're not going to be talking about the functions or every single thing. That's not what I'm here for. I'm going to chat about, well, what, what I use it for, basically, and um, a few tips and tricks to get yourself on your way if you've ever looked at or thinking about or getting all have the BeatStep Pro. So continuing on from that, we've got this MIDI keyboard right in front of us. What this is doing is it's coming out, so the MIDI output of that, of this keyboard, is wired in to, oh, right here, it's wired into a converter that plugs to the MIDI input of the uh, BeatStep Pro. So MIDI in from there, so MIDI out goes into MIDI in here. And how it's wired up is if you have this uh, MIDI keyboard, I've got this knob right here, and you can change the MIDI channel at which this sends out. So right now, it's on MIDI channel 1. And if you flick it over to MIDI channel 2, well, you can play anything over MIDI channel 2. So that means if you have it set up so you can flick between the two different channels, well, you can, you can be on the drum channel. You can see what's going on on the drums. Press record, for instance. Look over to channel two. You get the idea that was a pretty dodgy top line, but you know, you know, you get the idea. Just you can play anything in and it still works. The only downside to this setup is when you press play and it isn't set on record. You can't play over the top, it automatically kind of turns off the listen. What you could do is you could use a MIDI merger, for instance, this thing right here, which merges MIDI inputs. Uh, you could split the output of the keyboard to go into here and then also kind of go into there. So whenever it's ignoring it, it isn't now because it's playing, it'll actually still send it through to where you want it to go by using this MIDI merger, which is a really useful thing because you can't just merge two uh, MIDI channel, MIDI signals together. You need them to be in sync. That's what you'd use something like this for. So that's how you go about starting to play with this. It's also got like saves and projects and loads of saved finger of jiggies. I've never used that. I always sort of uh, tend to just keep it simple. I haven't got anything. I don't know what's saved on this. Never used any of that crap. I, I don't understand why uh, companies always have this crazy thing about saves and presets and things like that because like, do people use that? It just seems a bit like, bit weird swings pretty good actually because you can actually get some pretty good uh swing <laughs> on it if i play like an arpeggiator into um uh the seek the first sequence for instance ooh, ooh, ooh. i just button mash then Decay knob's broken. It's been really ropey. That's annoying. And then, for instance, you could get a fill going by uh, uh, using the rolls function on this. And you can merge that in and make it go half time quickly. Oh, I got it all good backwards, but you get the idea. It was uh, slightly out of sync with each other. What I'm doing there is I'm clicking shift that goes to an extra page and there's these slightly grey uh, writing on the bottom. Uh, I'm basically flipping between 116th 
which is the speed that is at now and one eight. But you may as well go into it with a fill. Of stuff as well so there was another thing for instance in the mind over matter video that uh, i did and i gotta be honest i completely forgot that the beat step pro could do this and that's poly rhythms uh you could do poly rhythms on the beat step pro i always forget how to do it so i've written poly on sharpie here there's some hidden kind of functions that got added in an update a couple of years ago and uh, when i did that i kind of just written them and they're kind of rubbing out and i can't remember what they are now but uh the polyrhythm is quite useful, and I think I saved it onto uh, 01, which is kind of the pads. What happens is you can, if you um, have this set up like shift. Oh, yeah, poly. You see poly's on. It's gone blue. You can turn it on and off, and I think I've just reset it now. So, for instance, uh, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. If I want, for instance, this pad. Well, uh, this is so the issue that I had was... Uh, I had uh, the poly synth um, in order to simplify the live setup for the video uh, the poly synthesizer I had samples in the wav trigger of it on the pad so these go send out triggers into uh, a sampling uh, module with an SD card in it called the wav trigger and then that's The problem is, is these run at a different uh, kind of length to the live looping that I had on the drums. If you haven't seen that video, check it out because that's that's what I'm talking about. I mean, if you want, you don't. You, I'm not making you. You don't have to. So what I did to sort of know where the timing was going, I've got no kind of click in my ears or anything. I started this sort of rhythm on the clicky kind of thing. So that was the first thing. In order to buy time to get over to the start of the 64 step sequence of the riff. So you play it in, it always plays in on number one instead of somewhere halfway through you got to kind of bide the time, so it was like, I did that. Turn off the swing, of course. And then it was like singing it, but with whilst hitting the hook, it was like, Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
and then these. I messed that up that one, but you know. The thing is, usually I've got to practice these kind of things with uh, one hand because I've got another hand holding a microphone and people are like, why don't you get one of those Britney Spears microphones? In all honesty, I don't want to, basically. I just don't want to. I tried one with the Desperado Vespa video and it was a nightmare to get sounding right. So much background noise because of moving around and stuff. I don't know how like Britney baby does it, but you know. And then the other problem is, is like, I just, I have no, I did, sometimes when I'm concentrating, I say the stupidest stuff. And if I've got a microphone plugged into me, people will hear me talking completely nonsense. It's just, uh, yeah, I'd rather just have a microphone. So uh, I'm blabbing again. I'm blabbing. Uh, what happened there was uh, uh, something else that we need to talk about was, was the polyrhythms, which I got onto and then I got completely lost track. And the thing is, is you're playing these live in. You don't want to be stuck there playing. If Let's say, for instance, if we go over to another channel like this one, channel 6. This is just a 16. If we make this 16 by going shift uh, over to 64, you could do a numerous things to get the last step to go to 64. You could flick over slowly by this. If you keep your finger on 64, flick over there and then press that. Now we're on 16 or start again. You could press shift and then this copies whatever you've got on here over to over the whole way so now you've got a 64 step loop but um you just copied and pasted what the fudge was going on there so what you could do is you could be like um uh, i don't know like you got that you're like oh yeah i'm very experimental there we go uh, you could just copy and paste it over by doing shift and then flick along now you got a 64 bit bar thing and now you can change it all up uh, you can feel like that. and they're all slightly different you know it's now it's now a 64 bar loop but like wait for it you'll see it going on so yeah so that's one way of doing it and honestly I could have potentially have done that in the mind over matter video but I used uh, the polyrhythms instead to solve an issue I had purely because it took less fingers, less buttons. This is the great thing about the BeatStep Pro is its immediacy, and that's why I like it so much, is there's no faff. Uh, well, there is some faff, but there's hardly any faff compared to other sequences that I've used. Like this one, you, uh, in a matter of like two button pushes, two button pushes, and sometimes that's what you need to get a change properly done. Like, you get the change correct. For instance, when I was going into the chorus of the Mind Over Matter, what I needed to do was... um live play in the snare, uh, but after the, fir after the um, first snare, uh, the snare on, it's, it's not enough, I had to turn on the distortion up on the module, so the hand motion was like, it, it's not in distortion, and then play the second one, so like, there's a kind of, you're thinking about that, like, uh, coordination, like drumming it, so it's like, it, it's not in distortion, and then you go back to turn that on, so now you've You've started the riff, you've gone up there, you turned on the distortion, you finished it. Things like that. And it's just like, and then you can, uh, but, but I'm blabbing then again. I'm blabbing! So uh, the polyrhythms, polyrhythms, like these, they can't be uh, 16 bar loops. Uh, so these live play in, like they're, these are all on 16 bars and you can actually tell like when I hit it, only that lights up. But because I've set the polyrhythms, for these to be 64 bar loop, 64's long. You can see this goes very long. So that means uh, that we can now play in a drum beat that is only on the 16, on these 16, but then these ones are polyrhythm. It's not intended for that, but that's what I use it for. So like we would just go with the kick drum, like uh, with the kick drum, like you got that. But if these were on 16, they would all stack on top of each other, but no. You can see that. See that, and then all live playing, live looping, there's no fast. 
you know, uh, it's just um, just little things like that. I've always found that this is really good for. It's just nice and quick. Um, what else do I do on the BeatStep Pro that's nice and easy? You can also save things in, uh, but I, I hardly ever do that. But in Mind Over Matter, I I did do that actually. I tell a lie. So uh, the pre-chorus is a tie slightly different chords to the verse. So the way this project is uh, set up is um. A live loop, a live loop in the riff that I play on uh, pattern one, and then in the pre-chorus for the pre-chorus, I flick over to pattern two. So it's like, um, uh, let's just get a kick on. Uh, you'll notice that that's all. Already... You know, I shared a video the other night asking about questions. Uh, regarding the BeatStep Pro on Patreon and there were a few questions and that's what I've been answering today mostly of those questions and then uh, we've got a few more like why don't you use the KeyStep Pro I gotta be honest um, it's great the KeyStep Pro is really good however the BeatStep Pro it's the buttons the pads this is more of a rhythm thing for me and the pads are just important to me the KeyStep Pro doesn't have the pads and the mini key the small keys i got to say, they're great, but I prefer this. I've already got this. So this is perfect. And the uh, bonus of the Keystep Pro is you can play polyphonically. However, you can also play polyphonically on this. And I have done a number of times, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first off, we'll answer another question, and that is uh, what, how do you expand and get more, um, more kind of notes? Well, you can have two Beatstep Pros, and we'll uh, get another one out now. So you can quickly and easily sync up two BeatStep Pros. Let's get the power going into this one. And what you do is you get a uh, mini jack, stereo mini jack, uh, clock clock out of the um, the master, and you plug that clock into the other BeatStep Pro, and then you will put clock. You flick that over to clock, and now if you watch this, and the great thing is, is if you want to do that thing where you like, um, uh, where you click shift and you press start. It goes back to the start, so you could be like. Uh, that you'll see that it always flicks back. So these ones are perfectly in sync now. So now you've got, in essence, you've got all of these channels and all of these channels. The thing is, is 16 drums is more than enough. It's, it's, it's plenty. It's plenty for people. Uh, so what you can use this for is you can actually use it to sequence a polyphonic synthesizer. One sec, let me wire it in. So I was saying earlier that you can actually sequence polyphonic synths with the BeatStep Pro. Yes, you can very limitly, limit with limits, uh, that's the word. So you've got 16, let's say you've got these 16 drum samples over here. Well, you've got that random one there. But if you have two of them, where well, you can use the drum channel on here to actually uh, sequence 16 notes of your choosing, on a polyphonic output, let's say. So right now, this is wired in to a polyphonic synth. And uh, yeah, so the output is wired into the uh, polyphonic synth over here. You can actually wire the output of the polyphonic synth back into this and actually have the polyphonic synth uh, basically play itself in here and then it can loop itself. But right now, I've got this wired in so on channel three now well i can actually so instead of drums on here they're actually assigned to different notes on the polyphonic synth uh start over now you can sequence it like that I stupidly unplugged it out of here. I haven't got it that bit, so. Oh, uh, you get the idea anyway. So that's what you could do. And then you can have two other monophonic synths here and here. Uh, the problem is if you want them on the same kind of MIDI output, you'd need to use a MIDI merger. One of these and a KeyStep Pro would be awesome because then you've got this, which is, I think, far superior to this for playing drums and being able to quickly play in beats and stuff like that because you've actually got pads that you can see they're nice and big 
and then you add this and the key step that must be pretty that would be pretty good however for me i have the beat step pro and the circlon the reason being is uh, i got the circlon before the key step pro even came out and i have asked myself a couple of times is like would i have still got this i don't know I, I i'm not sure i purchased this on uh, whilst i was on tour in uh, 2019 uh, basically uh, i looked at how much merch i sold and i was like you know what i'm just gonna spend it on a circle the main issue that uh, holds me back on both the beat step pro and the key step pro and i gotta be honest uh, the beat step pro would do everything i need if it had this one function and it's really annoying that it doesn't because it really hinders a few of like my compositions and stuff uh, one for instance is a, a song called safety uh the thing is is this only ever goes up to 64 step sequences uh safety is 128 se step sequences what you can do is you can actually i can't remember how to do it because it's really clunky is you can you can chain multiple patterns to play one after the other the problem is is that that doesn't work in the way that you would want to if you were going to live record so let's say i wanted to record a riff in doodly 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 doodly, that was 128 steps long i wouldn't be able to do it on the beat step pro what i would need to do is i'd need to do doodly doodly doodly, stop the flow halfway through save it flick it over to the next one doodly doodly doodly, and chain them together it's a really flunky process and it kind of ruins it and that's why i really needed to get the circle because the circle on you can have it well infinite length basically you can have an infinite length loop if you want and that's what really wins it for the circlon amongst other loads of other things and i'll do a video on the circlon similar to this at some point if you'd like me to so i hope that answered some of the questions like i said i did a video on patreon about this the other day and i said look look have you got any questions about this and i've tried to answer the ones that came up on there and i've always answer also answered ones that uh, came up on the youtube uh here and there and i hope it was helpful if you haven't got a beat step pro and you think it's right for you check out for the check out on ebay or buy a new one if you feel fancy you can get them in black um annoyingly the black ones didn't come out when i got mine and it just seems a bit pointless buying another one just for the sake of it even though the black one's way cooler looking with um with the black synthesizer but what are you gonna do uh so that's the beat step pro uh this and that would be really cool and i'll do another video on the circlon as well uh yeah uh, lots of things to think about anyway i'm sam look mum no computer hope that was of interest toodly doo